Hey folks, so today we're going to talk about keeping an eye on your JavaScript bundle size. Very, very important. We've already been hit under that by a number of projects. Number of projects. Uh, wow. So there are a few different ways that you can do this. Um, if your project's on GitHub um, and you care about things like continuous integration, there's a nice little package called bundle size. You can well, drop in. It's also a CLI, so you can use it locally as well. Also CLI. Now the idea behind bundle size is that you know once you've got it configured, you can say, well, I've got these bundles. I've got like a vendor bundle. I've got my main application logic ones, and I don't want those bundles to exceed a certain size. And so you know if uh, people are filing PRs against your project, it's very easy to see where they're falling off. Tell them you know, hey, this is crossing our budget for JavaScript bundle size. Please make your code smaller. The nice thing as well, I think it actually reports like what this like the PR size would be in terms of a particular like this file is this size, this file is this size. Even if you're not reaching your threshold, maybe you could say actually this is a huge jump compared to what I saw the last yeah. PR. So eh. um, yeah. yeah, the other side, you it doesn't have to be a bundle, right? Like you could just say this JavaScript file, what yeah. size is it? Yeah, yeah, just it's, just checking. No, it's all good. It's it's pretty nice, and it works off of gzip sizes as well. So you you get a picture into sort of what the final uh, final size might look like. Nice. So that, that bundle size took me like only 10 minutes to set up on one of my apps. Fairly low friction, mostly works off your package.json file. Folks, check it out. You've Did been I... looking at some of this stuff too. Yeah, so with Workbox, we kind of have a file size kind of concern, and we've been trying to like figure out how we can actually stay on top of it because it. we kind of did all this work, we released this thing, and now we're like, cool, what is the actual file size of this? And it's not where we'd like it to be. So we're working on a rewrite, and part of that is let's get it into our CI. So that way we can just, whenever we do a PR, what is the current size, what is it now? And it's super nice, the idea I think we took from Mosin at Lyft, where it's he's actually like, written a, a little bot that would say, this is the change for this PR. Has it gone down? Has it gone up? Um, and started like flagging thresholds around the percentage of increase or decrease. Um, so I've been making my own little bot thing so we can do the same thing and maybe some additional stuff as well with little plugins. But the idea is just to help with tracking like what is master, what is this pull request doing, and then adding like those similar sort of thresholds. Great, and one of the nice things about that is it's able to show you the before and after cost for every single file. Yeah, like I, I don't know, like I think Mosin's one was the first one where I'd actually seen it. It was like, ah, oh, that actually totally makes sense. You should definitely have that and everyone should just have it in their, their CI. Yeah, I would love to see more people, like more teams uh, integrating this into their workflow. I think it's I think it's really tight. And another thing Lyft have been doing is, uh, so we talked about Lighthouse and CI in one of our last episodes. Yep. Um, they're, they're combining sort of bundle size impact measurement with Lighthouse uh, measurements as, as well, so. Keep an eye on all their fronts, which is kind of kind of nice to see. It's almost as if there was a tool that would take plugins and run it on GitHub would just be super useful right now. It would. It would. <laughs> um, so another thing you can do if you're locally developing is uh, we, we worked on this feature uh, with Webpack called uh, Performance Budgets. And the idea is that you're able to set the budgets uh, that you want you and your team to follow for your different um, bundles. So by default, uh, Webpack uses a bundle size of about 250 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. um, your team might have something a little bit more specific, a little bit smaller, a little larger. But uh, this feature is just great for, you know, every time you're working on a change, you're trying to do a local build, just being able to make sure that you're not exceeding your team's budgets quite as much as you could be. So this would do this at build time, and presumably, it, does it throw an error, or does it still let you build and deploy, but it's just like, flagging it as an issue. So you can it, it can do a warning. It can also throw it as an error is my understanding. So nice. you've got, you've got your, your bases covered there. Yeah. So that's Webpack's uh, performance budget features. Uh, something we saw this week that was kind of neat was um, another tool called, it's a plugin for Visual Studio Code yep. uh, called the VS Code Import Cost uh, Extension. And one of the really nice things about this is that it can display inline in your editor as you're working on your code, like the cost of imports as you're working on them. So it shows you like a little bit of a comment at the very end of the line that says, you know, like Lodash is 70 kilobytes or... I was gonna say, this yeah. is like highlighting the issue that we flagged up um, a couple of episodes ago around using particular plugins to help you get around sort of file size things. Yeah. And this is a really nice example where it actually flags it um, like right in your editor, which is awesome. Yeah, and this is running like the Billy Webpack plugin behind the scenes, so it's uh, for for ES module style packages. It's going to at least be giving you an, an approximate for what the minified size is going to look like. Uh, okay. We've also nice. been talking to them about maybe highlighting the gzip size, but it's still it's still a good gut check for now. Yeah, I don't know. I think anything where it immediately makes you think, okay, I'm about to require this third party module. It's instantly like, well, this is the hit you're you're incurring from that. Um, which is really nice, really useful. Yeah. 
So we talked about continuous integration. We talked about what you can do locally. Um, another thing folks um, might benefit from is being able to measure like in production what the impact of their bundle sizes are over time. Two good services for this are Speedcurve and Caliber. Uh, so Caliber, these are kind of tools where you say, this is my website and they'll keep on like pinging it on a regular basis, yep. run a load of tests on them and then kind of report on an ongoing basis, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So one of the nice things about Caliber is that you're able to specify like your target devices. You can say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm targeting desktop, I'm targeting these mobile devices. And it'll be able to show you your bundle size like over time, like your JavaScript that you're sending down to people. So that's super handy if you're like basically sending down different assets based on like media queries or user agents or what have you. Exactly. Nice. So if a member of your team accidentally pushes out like a feature that's got a lot of JavaScript in there that's gonna, you know, decrease time to interactive, you know, have an impact on your page performance. Or if they push out a pull request that means that everything is like way faster because the bundle size is smaller. Let's yeah. be positive. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Good way to see both both wins and places <laughs> where you should probably cry. Um, but Calibre's really great for checking that stuff out. So hopefully folks have got their bases covered. You know, if they want to check this stuff out locally, they've they, got it. They got uh, the CLI, they got the pull requests, and then they've got actual production regular testing. Yeah. Um, and it's worth saying like, it's worth doing this stuff up front because a little bit of effort now should help you in the long term because it's just regularly tracking. You don't, there's no babysitting. It's just letting you know of these things. So you should definitely check these tools out. Yeah. Um, these tools are awesome for helping you, you know, just make sure you're shipping the minimal amount of JavaScript to your users, you know, defer the rest of that work until a later point in time. But yeah, try them out. Let us know what you think. Thanks.